Well, hello there, friends. Fantastic show today. A salt fish Milanese. Not chicken Milanese, not veal Milanese, but salt fish Milanese. This is the kind of fish you want to make for someone that may, may not like fish. They're going to love this. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned. We're going to make salt fish Milanese together. Well, hello, friends. Let me show you how easy it is to make. I know you know how to make a chicken Milanese. And a veal milanese. Have you ever heard of a salt fish milanese? Uh-huh. We're going to make it now. That was one of the most popular fish in my restaurant for so many years. When we said, and the special today is salt fish milanese. Oh, they didn't need to hear the other special. They just wanted salt fish milanese. So here it is. Beautiful piece of salt fish. We're lucky right here in Foro there. We got a beautiful piece of salt fish. When I get it, I ask them to give me about an inch, an inch and a half so I can make my own scallopinis. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the bloodline, friends. We're going to remove the bloodline and the skin because that's how it comes. So what I do is I take a slicer, which is a, this is a ham slicer. I love this. Uh, it allows you to do some really cool thing. And what we're going to do, we're going to remove that bloodline right there, you see? And at the same time, we're going to go down. We don't want to remove this out because that's good right there. That's good fat right there. But we have to remove the skin. So what I do is I go like this. Look, go in, remove this, the bloodline. I don't really like the bloodline. I mean, it's not going to hurt you if you eat the bloodline, right? So you look on both sides as you do that, right? You remove the bloodline and then you go straight down. To the skin, straight down to the skin, and then slightly scrape the skin. S slightly scrape the skin. See, a child could do this. Very simple. We have the skin removed. So now we're going to remove this letter because we'll do this letter, my friends. And now we're going to cut scallopinis. Okay? So to cut scallopinis, it's beautiful and fresh. Look at this. No smell. Fresh fish don't smell. Remember that. The only fish that smells is old fish. So at this point, I can cut about three scallopini in there. So I take my knife and I go up and down. Let me see. One. Yeah, I can do about three of them right here, right? One, two, three. Look, very simple. You see what I do, friends? Look, look, very simple. You can do all do this. It's, it's very important to have the right knife, right? And then we're going to go right in there and do about the same thing. Oh, be careful where you're going. <laughs> I'm telling you, be careful. I'm the one that's doing it. So look, there we go. We got two and three scallopinis. Okay, so now let's say then we don't have them quite thin enough or we didn't do such a good job because they're all thicker here than it is over there. We want to make it even, my friends. So how do you make it even? Very simple. What we're going to do now, we are going to pound them. I'll show you how to pound. You know, you can pound fish like you can pound chicken. Same deal. I love those, uh, those uh, plastic dispenser right there. So I'll show you, okay? We're going to do one piece. It's very simple, eh? I'll tell you what, I'll do two pieces. The other guy, the other guy doesn't need it. It's fine. Uh, I got a little moist rack with my sanitized water in here, so I'm good with my hand, right? And I go in like this, very simple. You see, look, boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, right? And then you take a meat pounder. And then gently, my friend, this is fish. You just want to make sure... It's even, and we don't want it. We want it to be about a quarter of an inch thick. So gently, 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 don't go out there and just, otherwise you'll hurt the fish. I mean, you're not going to hurt the fish. <laughs> it's already dead, so don't worry about that. You're just going to bruise the texture. Okay, so simple so far, right? Guys, you guys can see this one right here doesn't need it. It's even. It's even. So now we take the, pl the thing. We take the plastic out. And we got a set beautiful pieces. They're about a quarter of an inch thick, okay? And then we're going to remove all this. We're going to keep our area clean so we don't have a mess everywhere. Now we're going to put flour, we're going to put eggs, and we're going to put breadcrumbs. We're going to do a regular breading like you would do for chicken milanese or a veal milanese, right? Now, the breadcrumbs, my friends, are just panko, parmigiano Reggiano, and herb de Provence. No big deal. Look, I'll show you. Okay? And, and, and you know what I do? I make extra when I make this. Don't measure, okay? Just here you go. Just a little Parmigiano with in there. And, 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 and a little bit of Herb de Provence. Don't go out there measuring, please, okay? If you make a different next time, fabulous. 
Cooking is a little bit like so many other things in life. We don't want to do the same thing all the time. It gets boring, so we want to change a little bit, right? So, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Trust me, you want to change things. So look, hey, <laughs> all right, imagine if you ate the same thing every night, ate the same thing every night. It gets boring, right? <laughs> Cooking, you got to change it. So if one time you make the break home a little different than other, <laughs> hallelujah. All right, so here we go. This is the break conference. Very simple, eh? And I, I shoot it down a little bit thinner. Just do it a little thinner. See, it's a little thinner. I don't want it to be too coarse, okay? So, we got the breadcrumbs. Let me move this out of the way so camera can get a better angle. Now, what do we do? We take our fish or our chicken or our um, veal. We put them in flour, okay? See, very simple, right, friends? Remember, I don't do anything complicated. If it's complicated, we leave it up to the uh, professionals to do that. We're cooking at home, friends. We're having fun. That's the whole idea. I don't want it to be, oh my God, I gotta cook all day. We wanna have some fun. Remember, why are we putting the flour? We're putting the flour so the egg would stick. If you can't put the flour because you are allergic to flour, like so many people these days, amazing. Um, then you make sure your fish is super, super dry. Otherwise, the egg is not going to stick on a wet surface, right? And then you take your uh, your egg, yeah, and they're very yellow because they're free range eggs. They're beautiful, right? And then you take them like this, friends, and you put them in your breadcrumb. Careful, don't forget over here. Uh, you put them in a the breadcrumb, and you know what I like to do? I go like this. Look, see, just like this. But I, here you go, so look, see? Very simple, then you can take it, your hands stay clean, you see? The idea is to try to keep your hands clean, friends. Try to keep your hands clean. It just makes it easier to work, right? So, we can take it right there, we go in, and boom. You can do this, of course. Also, there's nothing wrong with doing this, okay? But if you have a couple of them, make sure it's really, really well coated, friends. Make sure it's very well coated, okay? Right? And now, we're going to put this in there right there like this. And swordfish milanese, my friends, is amazing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You're going to want to make this dish. And we're going to make a nice little lemon sauce, and we're going to serve with a beautiful arugula salad. I mean, nothing special. Eh? Very nice. Look at it. Okay, we're out of here now. We're done. Let's turn on the fry pan, friends. And then we're going to make a nice sauce. We're going to make a beautiful sauce. We're going to make a lemon sauce with a caper, a lemon butter sauce, <laughs> butter. And then we're gonna saute the fish. And for the fish, I have a beautiful Arica lemon olive oil. You don't have Arica lemon olive oil, use just a regular olive oil. I like it, uh, a lemon flavored olive oil. And the sauce, my friends, we're gonna put a, a butter sauce. So we're putting butter. <laughs> you gotta put butter. <laughs> Uh, life wouldn't be the same without butter, friends. As soon as this is hot, and you know, with butter, I'm looking about three and three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. I want it to be really, really hot. This story is kind of cool um, to tell you the temperature of things, the measures. It's not perfect with bodies, the temperature, but it's perfect for oil. It really works well for oil. But, I mean, you, you get a pretty good idea if it works on it. You know, I'm like 198. I'm good. Uh, you know, I use it when I go out in clubs at night. <laughs> Put it right there. No, I'm not kidding. I'm really kidding. So, <laughs> so 2.45. I got time. The fish is ready. Let's talk real quick about the sauce, friends. I got shallots. I got lemon juice. Chopped parsley. Lemon. We're going to put a lemon zest. We're gonna put the lemon zest, my friends. All right, a lemon zest, very, very important. And then capers, and I use the non-pareil capers. That means the very small capers. You know, if, uh, if allowed to, to, to grow, the capers, they become a flower. They're a nice beef, big white flower. Yeah, it's wonderful. If you, if you don't like capers, then don't put them in. Don't worry about it. Some people don't put it in. I like it, but if you don't like it, don't worry about it. Don't put them in. They are in a brine. So I usually go use a fork to take them out of there because I don't want to put that brine in there. All right, so we are almost 300. And the butter right there, we're going to put some shallot. 
If you don't have shallots, use onion. You, you know, another thing. I mean, I'm showing you how to make a sauce because I love making a lemon sauce with it. But, you know, sometimes I just take a lemon juice. Put a lemon juice on it. It's wonderful with just lemon juice, a little bit of arugula salada, and it's wonderful. You don't really need to make a lemon sauce. But I'm here. And I love to show you how to make a lemon sauce, but you certainly don't need to be making a lemon sauce. We're gonna put the shallots in there, let it do their things. All right, you wanna make a really, really simple lemon sauce and you can serve with fish, you can serve with anything, my friends. Remember, we wanna make sure we're hot. All right, we right here, we got 300 and a quarter. We're gonna put our fish in here. Now the beauty about doing fish, if I'm doing chicken, if I'm doing veal milanese, I start it in a fry pan and then I take him and then I take them in the, in the oven. The salt fish milanese is gonna be cooked. By the time I'm golden brown on both sides, my friends, by the time I'm golden brown on both sides, the fish is gonna be ready. I don't have to put it in the oven and cook. But if you wanna make them in advance, you can. Just make sure you don't overcook them. Make them light, light, light golden brown instead of dark golden brown. And then you don't have to put them in the, you, you can prepare them in advance on a cookie sheet. And then when you're ready for dinner, you just pop them in the oven. All right. So the sauce is down. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this because I just put this here. But it's going to be easier for me if I make the sauce right here, friends. So I'm going to move it because this is a little too small of a burner. So how about if I do this? How about if I do this right there? Does that work for you guys over there? It doesn't work for you guys? Okay, here you go. You see? I got a, that's a good idea. And I'm going to check with them. Instead of me doing it without asking, and then they go, wow, you went on a wrong burner. Because <laughs> it happens. They tell me that, you know. So let's see what we got here. Oh, we're almost there, my friends. We're almost there. Look. Oh, yeah. You'd be amazed at how, how wonderful it smells already. The herb de Provence gives it an amazing flavor. All right, the sauce is looking good. And the shallots. And then also I'm gonna make a quick little vinaigrette. For the vinaigrette, I got a rig of lemon olive oil. I got uh, uh, a Sicilian lemon balsamic vinegar. Lemon, lemon, lemon. Now my Sicilian vinegar is 18 years old. It's a little sweet, so you know what I do? I add a little bit of lemon juice. So I got some acidity in there, right? A Little bit of chopped parsley. That sauce right there, the shallots are doing great. I'm gonna put a little bit of chicken stock, friends. Shallots are golden brown. A little bit of broth, a little bit of broth. If you don't put chicken stock, you can put a, a vegetable stock. White wine, it'll be perfect in there, right? In the sauce, a little bit of parsley. We're looking good. And we're looking good, we're looking good. Everything is looking good. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to put this on the plate because it's gonna be cooked. Where's my spatula? Here it is. This is gonna be nice, my friends. How are we looking on the other side? Oh yeah, it's looking great. You see, it's so thin, my friends, then salt fish. We don't wanna overcook salt fish. It's one of those fish, friends. I'm gonna turn it off. I don't wanna overcook it. I'm gonna take it right there. And then I'm gonna finish the sauce right here. And now I got all the camera, the producer and the director over there, they are like pulling their hair. They said, oh, mama me, it's all over the place. Look, friends, <laughs> how are we doing over there? We good? All right. Look, look, put lemon zest, my friends, lemon zest. Lemon zest. Remember, that's how you use a microplane grater. Don't be one of them ding-dongs. Then go like this. You put the lemon on top. Remember, you put the tool on top, not the lemon on top. Okay, the tool goes on top and you do like a violin. And look, see? Let me tell you something. If you've never used this tool before, my friends, it's amazing. It only removes the yellow part, not the white part. The white part is bitter. You don't want it. Look how quick that was to make a sauce. Let me take the fish out of there. Because it's done. But the burner is off, yeah. It was just continue. This is it, my friend. You see? So, remember, you can make it in advance. Just don't cook it as golden brown, a little less golden brown, right? All right, so what do we got here? We got a sauce right there, we're looking good. Maybe just a touch more of this, of chicken, chicken broth. 
I'm not making a small amount of sauce. You want to make a bigger sauce, you go right ahead, my friend. Hello, capers. Capers, capers, capers. <laughs> I often wonder, you know, think about that. They become the flour. What were they smoking when they come up with the idea? Hey, you know what? Instead of um, uh, becoming a something we're going to eat, why don't we? No, no, I mean, it becomes a beautiful flower. So before it becomes a flower, let's take and put them in a the brine and we can eat them six months later. What, what were they thinking? Eh? This is fabulous. I'm glad they did. All right, look at this. This is looking good. The sauce is looking just great. We're going to let it thicken by itself. Let's make the vinaigrette, my friends. And the vinaigrette is very simple. I'm going to do an emulsion. <laughs> an emulsion. That's an emulsion right there. You watch. I'll show you. Get an emulsion blender. And now you blend the oil and the vinegar. So you have an emulsion. You see? Now you can put your own mustard in there too. But I'm doing it with arugula. And with arugula, I don't really like too much. Too, no, I don't want a thick vinaigrette. Because I want it to be very light. Okay? Let me take this out of here. The sauce is done. All I got to do now for the sauce, my friends, is finish it up with butter. And don't be shy now. You know I'm not shy when it comes to butter. Here you go. The minute you put the butter, turn the heat off. Turn the heat off. Turn the heat off, my friends. You put this on top of that salt fish right there, friends, with our arugula salad. Make sure you put enough butter and mix it up. Mix it up now. Did I put enough butter? Maybe not enough. What do you think? Just don't be afraid to put butter. All right, little salt and pepper. And then we're gonna put that right on top of the fish. Let me remove all the stuff I have in the middle. You see? I could have taken a whisk. That would have went faster, right? Here you go. The arugula salad. Don't forget the arugula salad. Here it is. Right there, my friends. Let's make a fabulous dressing. Recipe, we're gonna put a little bit of the dressing. Let's put it right in here, just a little bit. Uh, here you go. A little bit of cracked black pepper. A little bit of salt. Right here, I got a beautiful arugula salad. You don't like arugula? Then serve it with uh, potatoes. I love serving this with potatoes. Little poached potatoes, asparagus. But this right there, or, or, or spinach, or greens. Make it your favorite green. Right there, my friends. Let's take a, a piece of fish. Right there. We're going to take a sauce. And we have ourselves. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> it smells amazing. I love the smell of the capers. Right there, friends. Right there, right there, right there. You see? That's all you need. Right there. That's all you need right there. You take your arugula salad. Right there, and you have yourself a wonderful lunch, wonderful dinner, easy. I'm gonna test it to make sure it's cooked to perfection. <laughs> I already know. You see, look, look, look how gorgeous that is. And you see, you look at the fish, friends. You see, look, friends. It's perfectly cooked, you see? Look at this, you see? It's gorgeous. We don't want to overcook whole fish, no wonder what, what we do. Mmm, mmm. No, no, it's that. Mmm. It's crunchy. Because of the breadcrumb on it, it's fabulous. I hope you all make it. Remember, if you want to make it in advance, just pop it in the oven and warm it up. Just don't overcook it. A perfectly cooked fish should never, never exceed 135, 135 internal temperature. So you know it's cooked to perfection. I mean, some people like it more cooked. Cook it however you want it. Friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And we'll see you next week with another fantastic video. Thanks for watching.